the real action of compassion, and I'll talk about this in the practice of compassion, is touch. Um, we have amazing hands that are much more dexterous than our uh, non-human primate hands that enable us to do all kinds of amazing things, tool use, uh, you know, signals, signs, and the like, uh, various kinds of gripping behavior, of course, for caretaking. And so we asked, can you communicate compassion with a uh, touch, with tactile behavior? Now, I could talk for about 45 minutes with how amazing the skin is. It's our largest organ, and I'll spare you those details. Needless to say, it's fascinating. Scientists are discovering specific neurons in the skin that process information about uh, touch, we know the immune response is right there in the skin, which is why a lot of touch probably makes you live longer. Um, and so my student, Matt Hertenstein, asked, can you communicate compassion? And a lot of emotions we're soon to talk about with touch. Um, and indeed, so what we did uh, is we built a, a barrier in our lab, and the person stuck their arm through, and they waited, and this other person was given a list of emotions. They had to touch the person with a one-second touch to the forearm, and that person on the other side is like, what the heck was that, right? And they make a guess, uh, and what you find, quite remarkably, those are accuracy rates in the blue bars, right? In this study, chance guessing was 8%, right? And what you're seeing, compassion, uh, they're getting it right about 55, 60% of the time. Pretty amazing sympathy in this case. And I am ethically obliged to tell you two gender differences in this study. Uh, we had all gender combinations, women touching men and women, and vice versa. Um, when, the, uh, when the woman tried to communicate anger to the man, he got zero right. He had no idea what she was doing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow, that's, that's unbelievable. And when the man tried to communicate compassion to the woman, she didn't know what was going on. So. Good luck. Ethologists who lived in different parts of the world quickly recognized that uh, in a lot of our cultures, um, people spend most of their time in direct physical contact with one another. You know, estimates are that um, the non-human primates spend about 20% of their waking days grooming each other, 10 to 20%. Uh, you go to various other cultures and they're spending a lot of time in direct physical contact. Um, and regrettably, we are a touch-deprived culture in, in the West, um, and this has been documented. One of my favorite examples is a researcher who studied the conversations of friends in different parts of the world. So they're sitting in a cafe, and in England, the two friends, holding constant the unit of time, touched each other zero times. Uh, in, in the United States, in bursts of enthusiasm, we touched each other twice, and in Puerto Rico, the same friends touched each other 180 times. Um, we know, you know, uh, as an opportunity for intervention, just think about these thought experiments. Um, babies that were placed in orphanages that had all, this is 70, 80 years ago, uh, that had all the nutrients and warmth and physical security um, died at rates of 75% until they told the caretakers, hold the baby. They stopped dying, right? Uh, unbelievable uh, mechanism of social well-being is touch. And maybe the greatest, Michelangelo said, to touch is to give life. And he was right. He was absolutely right. So what we know in this realm of touch, and I'll talk to you about some cultivations or interventions that flow out of this, is that uh, when you touch somebody, Edmund Rolls, the neuroscientist, has found, you activate the orbital frontal cortex that site of reward and compassion and the like. We know that touch builds up cooperative relationships, or what uh, evolutionists call it reinforces reciprocity. And there are studies of primates. You see those two guys grooming each other. Uh, if that one on the left finds some food accidentally, guess who it shares that food with? The one on the right, they use grooming to build up cooperative alliances. There are basic studies showing that touch signals safety and trust. Uh, and needless to say, um, there's a whole new science of touch uh, uh, soothing. And what we know, now you can put your facts together, 
basic warm touch uh, calms cardiovascular stress. It activates the vagus nerve. James Gross at Stanford has found. One study has found it leads to oxytocin release. Uh, it makes people more cooperative. In the, in the prisoner's dilemma game, if the experimenter walks by and goes, it's good to have you in the experiment, and he pats that person on the back, or she pats the person on the back, that person is you know, twice as likely to cooperate just by feeling a pat on the back. Um, it is profoundly important. So um, what about touch therapies? These are real. This isn't some weird Berkeley idea that we spin out in a hot tub. Uh, I don't even own a hot tub. But, um, and Tiffany Field has changed medical practice by promoting the science of touch. Uh, and this should be encouraged uh, in classrooms and therapeutic settings alike. Some of the highlights in the over 80 studies of touch therapies it rigorously conducted uh, by Tiffany Field and colleagues um, in hospital settings is that touching premature babies, just regular physical contact, uh, you get a boost of uh, weight gain by 47%. Um, touching uh, patients with Alzheimer's and engaging them to engage in social touch uh, precipitously leads to drops in their depressive symptomatology that's associated with that organic disease. Um, for teachers and people working with kids, teachers who pat students on the back in a friendly way, uh, that student is twice as likely to speak out in class. Um, teacher librarians, a study in the last year has found who pat their student checking out the book on the hand, that student likes the library more and is more likely to come back. There is new work in the Berkeley School of Public Health just getting medical doctors to make eye contact, pat the person on the back. They're starting to show greater survival rates in the face of uh, complex diseases. So this is going to be uh, very important. Mm -hmm.